QuickBooks Desktop 2023, Budgeted Balance Sheet Data Input. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process. We do every time maximize the home page to the gray area view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, the open windows list, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial, the P, the L, the profit, the loss, change, the range from 010123 to 022823. Then we'll customize so we can go to the fonts to change to 14 o yes k then reports drop down company and financial the balance sheet standard report customizing it so we can range the change 010123 to 022823 and fonts and numbers need to change to 14 okay yes and okay that's the setup process we do every time we're looking at the budgeting now in prior presentations we looked at the budget related to the income statement the profit and loss which is generally the first report we think about with budgets because that's the performance report measuring how far we have gone this time we're working on the budget for the balance sheet and that's it could be a little bit more complex to visualize because that's trying to think about where we will be at the end of the budgeting process noting we took the same kind of strategy of exporting the first balance sheet that we had to excel as our seed as our starting point and then using excel to help us create the budget because it will no likely not simply be the bookkeepers kind of process the bookkeeper will help with the accounting side of things the accountants will be involved because they know how financial statements work but you're also going to need, you know, projective information to think about what's going to happen into the future. Once we have the budget that we put in together in Excel, this is what we have. This is what it looks like. We're now going to take this information and put it back into QuickBooks. The purpose of putting it back into QuickBooks and not just keeping it in Excel now that it's already in Excel is that we want to be able to run reports such as the budget, uh, the budget reports like the budget overview and particularly the budget versus the actual so we can see as time passes what we budgeted to happen versus what actually happened okay so then we're going to import the budget so we're, i'm going to go to the company drop down and just say we want to plan and budget set up a budget now we've already set up this budget now right but i want another one so i want to drop down we can have a multiple budgets so we can have we can we can even have multiple income statement budgets multiple balance sheet budgets we might have a a cash flow budget and a budget that's on an accrual basis and whatnot you get silly you can get crazy with budgets in any case we're going to create a new budget here this time though it's going to be a balance sheet budget 2023 in the practice problem i'm going to say okay and finish it so we've got our balance sheet in essence just laid out data input that's all we're going to do is simply input the data at this point now we could enter it on a month by month basis. Remember that the balance sheet, because it's where you're going to stand at the end of the period, maybe you don't do it every month, right? Maybe you do it on a quarterly basis, you know, where you're going to be at the end of the quarter or the end of the year or something like that. You know, it depends on what you want to do, but we broke ours out on a monthly. I'm going to put in just the first uh, three months uh, so that we have something that we can, uh, we can see the budget versus actual on January 4th. February and then we'll have April as well which will be out into the future in our practice problem so I'm gonna we're gonna put this information I'm just gonna pull it in from our budget so we had January information we had cash I'm gonna try to hide some cells to make this a little bit easier to do possibly 
So I'm going to put my cursor on B to D, right click and hide those cells. I don't need those. And then that looks good. I don't need anything past March. So I'm going to just put the budget in through March. I'm going to hide everything from H to Q or whatever. Hide. Don't delete them. Just hide them. And then, there we have that. And so now maybe it's a little bit easier to see my checking account. That's where we stand. So 95259 going back on over. So that's 95259. That's where we stand at the end of the of the budget. And then I'm going to go to the next one, which is 106212. So 106212. And then we're going to go into the March 117978. So I'm going to go back on over and say 117978. And then we've got the accounts receivable. So I'm going to greenify this, greenify it. It's been done, not the letters. I want to greenify the whole thing like that. So 20, 23, 152. So I'll do this a little bit quicker. 23, 152. And then we've got 28, 25, 814 and 28, 673. So I'm going to go back on over. I've got a cheat sheet over here. So my memory is not that good. It would be easier to do this on two screens. I mean, my memory is okay, but it's not good enough to memorize going back and forth three numbers that are you know four digits long or whatever that's why i have a cheat sheet i'm just telling you i have a cheat sheet okay so we got this one then so the inventory let's populate those items that's going to be here that's going to be the the uh four three four six four eight four six and i'm sorry that's going to be uh, yeah that's right and then the five three uh eight two and then the prepaid insurance so I'm going to greenify that. That's the same 11,000 all the way across. 11,000, 11,000, 11,000. I could have copied that one across. I got too many zeros. And then we'll greenify that one. And then this one, uh, 98,000 all the way across. So that's going to be the furniture. 98,000, 98,000, 98,000 depreciation hold on a sec k paso with my greens that one that one now this one do i enter it in as a positive or a negative i think it's a negative nine eight because it's a contra asset nine eight three four if it's backwards we'll have to come back in and fix it nine eight three four negative nine eight three four negative nine eight three four and then We've got the machinery and equipment, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. And then we've got the Accum U Lated 139. It's going to be a negative 139, negative 139, negative 139. And Greenify. Now we're on the liabilities. We're moving right along. This is ridiculous. This is a lot of data input. I know accounts payable accounts payable it's okay we're almost there this is a positive of because it's a it's a liability now of the accounts payable which i said was 4008 4469 4964 i think those two are boggling my mind i might have dyslexified them or made them backwards or whatever 1000 for the visa 1000 to 1115 uh, to 1238 and then we'll greenify that interest this is 73000 across the board that's muy facile very easy and we'll say then the loan is the same what happened there i want to make the whole thing green Five thousand and thirteen one oh nine. So we'll say five this one five thousand five thousand five thousand. This one is one three one oh nine one three one oh nine one three one oh nine pay roll. I pay roll. That's how I roll. I pay. 
and then I roll 2076. So we got 2076, and then it goes to 2315-2572 on the pay and roll sales tax payable 554. So we've got 554, and then it goes to and then it goes to on the sales tax payable 617686, I believe. And then we have that other sales tax here, which was the 25, I'll say 25 to 28 to 31. Unearned revenue. What are you talking about unearned? I earn my revenue, dang it. Call my revenue unearned. This is going to be 450, 502, 557. And then we've got the Chase loan, 56770. That's 56770, 56770, 56770. Chase loan, actually, it should have been down here 56770, 56770, 56770. And then I'm going to delete this, delete, delete, delete. And then we're so close. Almost, this is quite tedious quite tedious but we're really close 65,000 owner investment owner investment 65000 65000 65000 uh, that's one too many o's I knew it and then and then 500 500 for the draws we only get two more and then we have to stop so enjoy these last two get maximum enjoyment out of it because this is the last one and then we have to stop because there is no more 79220 this one's a little confusing so 79220 and then 92402 92402 and then 106562 106562 106562 now so I'm going to say, okay, now I might have messed up some, if I messed up any of the data input, then I'll be able to see it on the report. So if I go to the reports drop down, budgets and the budget overview, this time now we've got two kinds of budgets. I want the balance sheet because now we got two of them. I'm going to say, okay, and finish. And then notice that it might be out of balance, right? And which is something... So this one is actually out of balance, right? That means I messed something up here and I'm gonna to have to go back in uh, and fix it. So we got something that is not quite right. Now, I'm not gonna go in and drill down and, and pick it up right now because, it, because I wanna do that on the following presentation. But just note that that's gonna be the process. We'll do the data input and then we forced this to be in balance by having the plug here, making our debits and credits basically uh, forced to be in balance so but there's nothing in QuickBooks that forces us to be in balance when we go to the balance sheet here on our actual data it does force us this assets is always going to be equal to liabilities and equity unless you do something really weird because QuickBooks forces it to be in balance with the use of the double entry accounting system when we do a budgeted balance sheet we don't have the double entry accounting system. It's just us entering data into the system. And therefore, we're the ones that are going to have to verify and make sure that our data input is proper. This balance not being in balance is a good indication that I have a data input error that I'm going to have to go back in and, and find and correct, which we'll get into uh, more in the following presentation. When we do do those corrections, however, note that I can, of course, just open my report back up, go into the company, planning and just set up the items i'm on the balance sheet and i can go in here and make any adjustments that we need to be making uh, the other thing if i go back to the reports once we have the report set up we have this report and then the budget versus actual report the other being the other key report that'll help us to see uh, what we budgeted to happen versus what actually happened and that's one of the main reasons we want to put it back into quickbooks so that we can run those comparative types of reports. We'll dive more into that, make some corrections, run some reports next time.